And it's Evan Kerskell here. I'm at the big Palo Alto Networks event in San Francisco. And I'm really excited to, you know, sit down with one of the, you know, true industry insiders uh, and, and VP product management leaders at Palo Alto ne Networks, Arupam Upadhyaya. How are you, sir? Evan, I am great. Thank you for asking. What an exciting week for us. Yeah, you have so much news, so many announcements, uh, demos, hands-on, everything is going on here in San Francisco. Before that, maybe introduce yourself, your role and mission team within Palo Alto Networks. What are you focused on? Yeah, so Evan, I've been at Palo Alto Networks for almost five years. I am VP of Products for Prisma Sassy. Prisma Sassy has Prisma Access, which is our secure services edge, our secure access stack in the cloud. Second part is Prisma SD-WAN, which is our SD-WAN component. Global Protect or Prisma Access Agent, which is our agent that connects us to uh, the Prisma SSE or Prisma Access. And then last but not the least, Prisma Access Browser, which extends our SASE to unmanaged devices and provides that last mile of data protection on all devices. Fantastic. So let's look at the big picture. SASE has been around for a while now. Uh, it's you know been embraced by the industry, but requirements are changing. Customer needs and, and expectations are changing. What are some of the most critical capabilities you're seeing right now in regards to SASE? Yeah. So Evan, if we really uh, take a step back, SASE is a fundamental pillar of zero trust architecture. And what does zero trust mean? Zero trust means there is no trust between users, applications, devices, and data. Applications could be owned by enterprise or could be non-enterprise. Every trust has to be explicit and has to be dictated. That's what zero trust is. And SASE is manifestation of zero trust in the cloud. If you think about SASE, it's cloud-delivered secure access uh, our Prisma SASE runs on top of Google Cloud and AWS. Mm. And Evan, we recently announced that now it extends to Oracle Cloud as well. Mm. The multi-cloud presence allows us to build a highly resilient secure services edge architecture, which gives you five lines of high availability. And beyond that, the, the few new things that we are seeing, Evan, because that was your next question, we're definitely seeing an increased buzz around Prisma Access Browser because it extends security to unmanaged devices, provides loss mile data protection, and more importantly, gives you full visibility into all traffic. Tra there is some traffic, Evan, that is hard to decrypt. So it gives you full visibility to the entire stack. Then the second part that is exciting apart from Prisma Access Browser is our AI and large language power data classification, which gives us unparalleled visibility to shadow data and provide the right data protection policies. Our extension of AI apps catalog to more than 2000, that's available on our SASE platform, including Prisma Access Browser. And last but not the least, like I said, we also extended our cloud infrastructure to Oracle Cloud. So that's the most exciting part, Evan, as we think about SASE. So much news, really exciting. Let's talk about the secure browser, I mean, the browser has been the focus of our personal lives forever, uh, but it's now really important to our professional lives for hybrid work, remote work, and work from anywhere in particular. You know, tell us what makes your approach to browsing secure and, you know, the specific challenges it yeah. solves. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if I look at myself, hmm. I live my life inside the browser. Uh, whether it's checking emails, looking at documents, looking at spreadsheets, or even interacting my, with my favorite large language model or chatbot or extensions, all that is in the browser. So when you're living your life inside the browser, the hackers are also taking notice. Mm. Uh, in fact, there was a recent survey that said 95% of organizations have, uh, talk, have experienced a browser-based attack. So browser is becoming the new venue where we are interacting with applications, but hackers are also coming in. So when you think about browser, uh, when you think about commercial browsers, they're not really equipped to handle that secure infrastructure or provide that security. When you think about security, it's two pillars. One is make parting the browser. So 
the browser is protected. And the second is, as bad guys come in to implant malware or steal your data from the browser, the ability to protect against that as well. And that's what Prisma Access Browser provides, giving you a hardened browser and giving you that last mile data protection against all kinds of uh, attacks that are happening in the browser. Interesting. So let's talk, you know, the usual big picture challenge, encrypted traffic. It's, it's always been a challenge for this industry. And yet a secure browser, you know, offers another uh, way to do threat inspection. How does that work exactly? Yeah. Look, a uh, lot of times uh, traffic is hard to decrypt because of technology mm -hmm. or business reasons. Mm -hmm. Let's start with business reasons, right? You might have a valid business reason that you don't want to decrypt uh, specific traffic like Microsoft Office because you want to honor their SLAs. That mm -hmm. could be one part. Or it could be a technology reason where there are protocols like Quick that are propagated by Google or championed by Google or think about applications that require certificate pinning. They are very hard to decrypt, Evan. And when they become hard to decrypt, traditional network security inspection mechanisms will find it very hard to detect malware that's happening inside that. There's one more aspect, Evan. It's just not the lack of decryption or the ability to decrypt. A lot of attacks are actually being, being assembled in the browser and those attacks get delivered or malware gets delivered in chunks to the browser. And this is where I think Prisma Access Browser shines because it sees all the data before that gets uh, decrypted or encrypted. So I have the ability to figure out whether the protocol is quick or whether the business application that has uh, does not allow for decryption to happen. I can run my security, whether it's DNS, whether it's URL filtering, malware or sandboxing. And that is how I can extend security to traffic that was hard to decrypt. And I mean, that's actually in a way game changing because we anticipate more and more protocols becoming harder to decrypt uh, in the network and uh, for business and technology reasons. And this is where Prisma Access Browser allows us to serve our customers in a better fashion. Fantastic, well done. So it, it, we're all participating in the incitement around Gen AI and LLMs and agentic AI, uh, but up to now security has been a bit of an afterthought maybe by some, but you're, you're building a kind of bodyguard for, for the AI and Gen AI world. Maybe describe your announcement around Prisma and uh, some of the new capabilities you're rolling out. Yeah, so Prisma Airs or Prisma AIRS mm -hmm. is the new thing that we have announced. And look what hap what's happening, Evan, is almost all of our customers are dealing with AI tools, right? Whether they develop, develop applications or interaction with AI agents. And when that happens, you've got to really first start with AI model scanning, making sure that you scan the model to make sure there are no vulnerabilities. That's the first part you want to do, that you have the right uh, model with no vulnerabilities. So that's the first pillar that we reduce, AI model scanning. The second is AI posture management, making sure that the posture and the security around the posture for your entire ecosystem is not compromised. There are no over permissions in that entire AI ecosystem because that can lead into security issues. Third thing, when you start thinking about this is, okay, that's great. I got my model secured. I, I, I got my permission secured. Now when you start thinking about attackers trying to uh, uh, trying to uh, create vulnerabilities or expose vulnerabilities, that is where red teaming comes in, mm -hmm. where we can provide automated AI tools that can do penetration testing against your model to figure out where the weak cracks are or where the weak spots are. So you can go and patch those up so your model is secure. So now we are done with building. Now you deploy the model. Now there'll be runtime issues, right? There could be, how do you provide runtime security? So that becomes the fourth pillar giving you runtime large language model security. And last but not the least, you, when you think about AI agents, giving them security, whether it's about uh, identity impersonation or memory, uh, memory hijacks, you got to make sure your agent is secure as well. So Evan, really, five pillars, right? Uh, agent, securing the agent. Second part is making sure that you have the right permissions. Third is making sure that you have the right AI red teaming tools. Fourth is the right runtime security. And last but not the least, securing your AI agent. 
Fantastic. What's well, quite a foundation you've, you've built. Um, one of the challenges as, as we head into this next phase, I think, is balancing all of the innovation and opportunities with these new SaaS applications and Gen AI tools with legacy, you know, technical debt, older networks, older, you know, VDI, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How do you see navigating these two worlds of modern new innovations with the legacy that we're kind of tied to at the moment? Yeah. Evan, if you think about VDI, that was a great concept when application was sitting inside the data center mm. and you wanted to provide access to those applications while maintaining the confidentiality of your data and making sure applications don't kind of compromise. But the world has changed on us, <laughs> Evan. In the last 20 years, applications have become decentralized. A lot of apps have moved to the cloud. Internet and SaaS have become more important. And that's where, and people are moving a lot of their workloads that historically sat in data center to clouds. Then the question really becomes, do you want VDI to be the choke point? Or do you want to make sure that you provide consistent security and superior experience? And that's the problem we want to tackle. So with Prisma Access Browser, Evan, we already can provide you internet and SaaS security. That is a need to go back to the VDI infrastructure. That frees you from the VDI uh, infrastructure, superior experience, better security, uh, at a better total cost of ownership. Mm. And then what we have now recently added to our portfolio uh, as part of this launch is, we also support Azure Virtual Desktops. Mm. So as customers do their migration from legacy VDI to DAS, we can support that. And if you enable app streaming on, on your uh, legacy VDI infrastructure, we can support those applications as well. So what happens now? Prisma Access Browser becomes your window into all applications, whether you're sitting in internet, SaaS, VDI, or in the cloud, while providing a better experience and consistent security. Fantastic approach. Um, so one thing I've, I've seen, you have great demos here in San Francisco at your, your big event, and you're one of the few vendors that really looks at user experience, UI, UX, that whole world. Um, what are some of the challenges there? Because you're, you're clearly putting a lot of effort into a next generation user experience. Cut for a second. 